Meet Jim Galing. He's an invertebrate paleontologist. That means he studies the fossils of things that do not have backbones. He's at the South Australian Museum. He's one of the world's experts in the earliest evolution of animals, and these are the Ediacaran fossils in this period here, 635 to 542, just before the Cambrian explosion. And he's written a couple of books about the rise of animals, and he has another one about the fossils of the Ediacaran period. And we sat down in his office in the depths of the South Australian Museum, and we talked about the rise of animals, why animals got more complex, and about the question, are we alone? I'm Jim Galing. I'm a paleontologist at the South Australian Museum here in South Australia, and I've been working on uh, fossils and sediments of the Ediacaran for the last, well, I guess about uh, 40 years. 40 years in the Ediacaran. So what's the time frame for the Ediacarans? Well, um, that time frame was actually established effectively here in South Australia um, around about 10 years ago uh -huh. when the International Commission on Stratigraphy, in other words, the Time Lords of yes, Geology. the Time Lords. Finally adopted the recommendations of the working group that there should be a marker, a golden spike, yes, if you like, yes. for the base of a new geological period at the bottom end of the existing geological periods. What the working group had done is established that you could identify rocks of what we now call Ediacaran age um, in a parcel of, of uh, sedimentary strata, layers of rock that are found on almost every continent. The interval is from 635 million years right through to 542 million uh -huh. years. And that's established by dating um, volcanic ash layers close to the defined boundaries in a couple of places around the world. Let's turn back the clock of time and go back to 635. Just the cryogenia has just mm -hmm. ended and we're going to start the life on its way and we're going to watch it. Mm -hmm. Now, in what sense will it replay and what sense would it not replay what we see today? Would humans be here, for example? Probably not as we know them, no way at all. Well, how different? The, what we're trying to learn right now about the Ediacaran world is not just what are the organisms and taking guesses at how they relate to, to modern creatures. What we're trying to find out is how they related to each other. Right. What were they doing? What was the dynamic which drove ecosystems in the Ediacaran. Now, we're dealing with information which has gone through several filters, and because it doesn't include skeletons and quite the diversity of, of fossil material that, and even fossil chemicals that our um, younger fossil workers, worked from younger rocks, have at their advantage, there is lots of uncertainties. The last one I found was uh, effaced, it was poor, it was, it was only to smudge. This one's really sharp. You know, if I could find that layer, I suspect other things on that bed would be the same. And then we went a bit further and we would find even better and sharper specimens Ooh. from ostensibly the same bed and tiny things on, that, on those beds which we'd never looked for before. Oh, what do you think it is? Well, let's have a look. If I can get it. Now, what we use some material called oh. silly putty, oh, okay. <laughs> which loves itself and hates anything else it touches, which oh. is good for us because it doesn't stick. So we can press it into uh, the external mould. What does that look like to you? That looks like uh, trilobite, tiny trilobite. Oh, no. Trilobites only trilobite. occur in the Cambrian. I don't care. I don't know. This is the Ediacaran. I don't care. You're not supposed to have trilobites. It looks like it. <laughs> you, you're going to count them out. Darwin said, what, where was the ancestor to the trilobites? Well, right there, I guess. Well, it might be. This hasn't been described as yet. You, it's gone now, sorry. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> but there are always new things to discover. The point about it, it's not just that we found things that looked like trilobites. Yeah. What we were finding is that these things were associated in ways 
which are very similar to what you get if you were studying the ecology on the seafloor today. Before we move on, I'll this, try this, this we'll pink Dickinsonian, uh, is it a male or a female? <laughs> um, gender assignment is difficult at best of times. 